In this screencast, I would like to talk about filters in the outgoing references view of the Heapwalker. Typical first selection steps in the Heapwalker are class selections or allocation spot selections. Here, for example, I have selected all instances of a particular class in the Eclipse IDE that I'm profiling here. But those kinds of selections may be too coarse grained. There may be too many instances to analyze in detail. However, often you know something about fields or outgoing references of the objects that you're actually interested in. And that's where filters in the outgoing references view of the Heapwalker come into play. So let's open one of the bundle loader instances and look at its primitive fields. There's only one primitive field, the loader flags field. So let's pretend to be interested only in bundle loader objects that have their loader flags field set to one. You can do that by selecting the primitive field node and choosing apply filter by restricting the selected value and then setting the text field to one. The drop-down list here shows you all your previous input, so it's easy to repeat a certain selection. Let's click on OK, and a new object set is created with 26 instances out of the 164 instances that we had before. Let's click on OK, and now we only see bundle loader instances with loader flag set to 1. And we can continue to work with these objects in the Heapwalker in any way we like. Let's go back to all instances. Another possibility is that you know something about the outgoing references of the instances that you're interested in. For example, in this case here, you may know that one of the required bundles is the Orc Eclipse J phase bundle, for example. So let's dig into this array of required bundles and try to find the name of a bundle. This is it here. So we apply a filter at this position by restricting the selected value. And filters always work on the top level objects in the current object set. Only objects are included that have an outgoing reference chain just like the one that we have selected and the selected reference has to satisfy a particular condition. In this case we require that the string is equal to a value of orc eclipse j phase and we end up with 10 bundle loader instances. And again, we could take it from here, but let's go back again to the list of all instances. The most powerful filters are code snippet filters. You can select a top level object or any outgoing reference and create a code snippet filter like this. This brings up the JProfiler code editor. The script here gets the selected reference as an argument, in this case the bundle loader, and it has to return a boolean value, true for retaining an instance and false for discarding it. The editor here has full code completion functionality. For example, let's enter B, U, and then control space, and we see the bundle loader argument is available for code completion. Then let's enter a dot, and after a while the code completion pop-up is displayed. Let's select the isLazyTriggerSet method with a boolean return value. If we do not finish this script with a semicolon, it will be interpreted as an expression. And since the isLazyTriggerSet method returns a boolean value, this is a suitable expression for this filter script. Let's click on OK. And so we end up with a 79 instances of bundle loaders of bundles that are lazily loaded. If you program more involved scripts, it may be inconvenient to enter them over and over again. So the history of scripts shows you recently used scripts grouped by signature so you can select a suitable script that you have used previously and use it right away in the editor.